All right, so we're getting ready to enter the world of WordPress, but before we do that, we need to take a look at uh, content management and um, why why we're at this point, why, why do we learn HTML and uh, where do we go from here kind of a thing. So what you've been doing up to this point is you've been learning how to take content and manipulate it through using HTML. The, the concept of this is, has been around since the beginning of the internet. Uh, markup languages or HTML, XML have been used to take human legible code and create uh, markup, which then translates into websites, programs, and content. The, ever since the beginning though, the, the founders of the web, they, they saw an issue with managing content. So I don't think it was ever their intention that HTML, XHTML, PHP, JavaScript, all those coding languages, I don't think it was ever their intention for the end user to know those things. I think it was always their intention to use those tools to make content better and how to manage it better. And so now we are at the point where we have tools in place that can manage content and will also manage the HTML, the CSS, um, the actual structure of the sites for us. But you need to understand where that is all coming from and that's why we do HTML first and then we take a look at content management and WordPress. We're gonna be looking at specifically content management systems or CMS. A content management system is a tool specifically designed to help a website creator manage the website's content Content management includes functionality, design, text, media, and other elements that come together to represent a website. So when I refer to content or content management, I'm referring to not just the text, not just the images, I'm referring to everything, the functionality, the um, design, the implementation, that's content management. And content is what makes up your website. So it includes functionality, design, text, media, and other elements that come together to represent a website. Oh, I just said that, sorry. Um, and it's good to know that this predates the internet. So content management systems didn't come out of the internet. Uh, before the internet was around, content management, content management systems were used for programmers and businesses to manage large amounts of content and, da and data, but it's not, the way we see that today, um, it was all localized. You had to have software installed on your systems in order to, to manage the content. And the content was then passed from computer to computer through file sharing, not how it is today um, through the internet. Content man management systems, they have key components that make up their interface. And this is standard for all content management systems. I know we're gonna be looking at WordPress specifically in this class, but I'll be referring to other content management systems and they're all gonna have these types of tools within their interface. You're gonna have a control panel or a dashboard. This is when you first log in and this is when you, this is the, the, um, the area where you access everything through the content management system. And we'll take a specific look at this from a WordPress standpoint in the next lecture. You're going to have users and user roles. Uh, generally, that means that you can assign multiple users and give certain security levels to those users. You'll have version control, which means that you can make modifications and then revert back to previous versions of that page or the article that you've made. There are templates in place. Usually these templates are used for design aspects, but they can also be used for functionality. They can also be used for organization, and they can also be used for different types of information. So maybe different types of content that you might have. For example, you might have um, a page that has very static content, but then you might have another page that has dynamic content, and you use a template for each one, a different template for each one. You're always gonna have a WYSIWYG. In fact, you'll probably have multiple WYSIWYGs. For those of you who don't know, WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. That means that you're giving the tools and you can utilize those tools, but you can't do anything within that space other than what the tools are, that are provided. 
This is also known as a text editor or a, um, uh, some, some people, old school people will call it a uh, word processor. Um, but your WYSIWYG is where you actually implement your copy, images, and the basics of the content. And you're always gonna have add-ons or modulars or uh, plugins. These are all tools that uh, you use in conjunction with your content management system. So they're usually developed by third-party uh, developers or um, third-party design firms, development firms, to give better functionality to the existing content management system. So why are we talking about WordPress? So WordPress is a content management system used to create and maintain websites through unique themes, custom functionality, and a wide network of tools and support. We're gonna get into the depths of uh, WordPress in the next um, lecture, like you're actually gonna take a look at it and, and understand how to maneuver through it. Uh, but I want, to, want you to understand kind of like where WordPress is coming from. WordPress is open source, meaning it is contributed, it, it is built and supported by um, ongoing developers who are committed to keeping the software free of any purchase license. So you will never have to pay for WordPress. No one will ever have to pay for it. Now you might have to pay for an add-on or you might have to pay for support or sorry, excuse me, hosting, or you might have to pay for domain registration, or you might have to pay for security features and different things like that. But WordPress, that's all extra. That's all stuff that gets added onto WordPress, but WordPress core will always be free. So you can go down, you can go to wordpress.org right now and you can download the software. You can install it on your internal system or you can just install it on a website, absolutely free. You can use it 100% free. Um, it's important to know that this is not a website builder. This is a content management system. It's not a website builder. Now you can have website builders that are content management systems but you, not all content management systems are website builders. There we go. Um, what WordPress is not, is it's not what Wix, Weebly, and Shopify provide for you. Uh, I'm taking a big step in saying Shopify is a, is a website builder. Um, I think some people would classify it not as website builder, um, but when you take a look at it and the structure of it, um, I would classify it as a website builder. Website builders have very rigid designs. Um, you're limited to, on customization. Uh, usually they keep you within a mold and it's hard to grow your website because uh, you have limitations that you have to adhere to. Um, generally they have a specific developer network. So it's not like everybody can go in and modify or change the look and feel or the, or the functionality of the site. Um, generally they are proprietary. The ones that I mentioned, Wix, Weebly, Shopify, those are proprietary licensed software that will allow you to build a website. Um, you have to pay the license to keep them up to, up to date. Uh, so there's that recurring cost in addition to hosting and, and different other licenses. Um, GoDaddy, GoDaddy is, is Mm, I mean, they're pretty much the number one um, hosting, sorry, excuse me, domain registration um, and hosting company out there. They're very commercialized. They have a platform that you can use that is essentially a website builder and they encourage you to use it. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, Hostgator, they have their own. I think Bluehost is using theirs now. Um, so you're gonna see them a lot. I'll be honest, we've, we as a company have thought about using website builders um, because we see they, from a marketing standpoint, they can get people in the door. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to find one that we would actually be committed to because we just see that there's a lot of qu uh, quality lost in website builders. Um, yeah, I know I'm talking a lot about the website builders, but I'm gonna you know compare those in the next lecture. So. Uh, just so for today, know that WordPress is a content management system. It's not a website builder. The history of WordPress, I, I talked about this in our first lecture, but a little bit more insight into this. Uh, so Mikhail Valdrigi, he developed this 
using uh, PHP, but uh, he developed into what he called B2 Cafe Log. This was in 2001. It was just a, a uh, website used to blog, essentially. And what you would, excuse me, what you you do is you would you would go and you download this software, and then you would upload it onto your hosting platform or locally, and you would maintain it on your own, and um, you would use it to to essentially create very basic, very simple blog websites. Um, it's written in PHP and it uses what's called a MySQL database. The MySQL database, that manages the content for you. Uh, the PHP manages the, the functionality and the code. Um, and then that's all brought together into the software, which is WordPress. In 2002, so just a year after he created this B2 cafe log, um, Valdrigi, he dropped the project. He, he essentially made an announcement on a um, forum and said, hey, this is all great and everything, but I don't have the time or effort to support this. Does anybody want to jump on board? Now, at that point, it was being used. People were interested in Cafe Log or B2. Uh, those names are interchangeable. They were using it. The problem was, is he just didn't have the time and effort to, to maintain it. So Mike Little and Matt Mullenweg, they, they saw Michael's message. And I think they may have actually already been in communication with Michael when this all happened. But they stepped up and they said, hey, we, we want to collaborate. We want to be a part of this project. We think there's a lot of potential here. Just some insight. Mike Little is actually in London and Matt Mullenweg is here in the States. Um, it's always been this way, but they were communicating through the power of the web and, and they had created a connection and a, um, a mutual want to take this to a better level. And so they took the code and the licensing for B2 and Cafe Log and then the two of them got together and they took a look at the core of it and decided like, what can we do with this to make it more, um, more scalable for the future? And that's what happened in 2003. So a year after 2000, or, uh, Rigi dropped the project, they brought it into their house. They reconfigured it, still using PHP but then they relaunched it under the new name WordPress. And it's been that name ever since. I'm gonna to refer to uh, Mullenweg here and again in a minute. So what's PHP? The, the, the standard definition, PHP is a server-side language using human legible markup to define a series of code for the purpose of web-based applications. What you need to know is, uh, let's three things. PHP, runs on the server. So you have to have a server to run PHP. We've been using HTML and we have not connected to a server yet. You can use HTML locally, you can use it in the web. It will run off of a browser. That's all you need to run HTML. With PHP, you have to have a server running. That's for security, uh, it's for security and for functionality. Um, also, the history of PHP is that it wasn't secure and that there's a lot of like limitations of PHP. That's out the door. You do not need to know PHP to use WordPress. In fact, it's not really going to benefit you at this point if you do or do not know PHP. If you're wanting to actually do some coding and become a developer, yes, you would need to do, know PHP in order to code certain things for WordPress, but you don't need to know it at all to use it. What you do need to know is a basic understanding of HTML and C, um, CSS to use any WordPress system or any CMS. That's why we, we, we do that introduction to HTML and show you the basics of how to use elements because you will see those in a CMS, a content management system, you will see those in WordPress and you, you just need a basic understanding of what's going on because it'll help you troubleshoot issues that might come up. So for WordPress, and you'll see this in other content management systems, but 
now we're, we're speaking solely for WordPress. Um, the features that you'll see is it's database, database driven, which allows you to filter and access content based off of categories, terminology, tags. The database itself itself lets us um, organize and filter the content. Uh, the design, you have, uh, at times it feels like unlimited options uh, to customize and design with WordPress. So you can actually use WordPress itself to design uh, and implement your brand. Um, but you also see this through theme customizations, the structure of WordPress or the structure of theme templates and secondary add-ons or plugins. It's SEO ready. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's search engine optimization. So out of the box, when you turn WordPress on, it's ready to optimize your content for search engines. And that means Google can come and crawl your site and properly index your, your, um, your content. Now, that doesn't mean that there's nothing else you should do because there is. There's a lot of things um, with content management and search engine optimization that you need to know. But the good thing is WordPress already gets you going from the start and you don't have to start at zero. Um, I would like to say that WordPress is probably around 80. Mm, okay. That's probably generous. 75 to 80% ready as far as SEO. And then the rest of it comes into play specifically around your content. And you usually work with a marketing team or you go out and do research as far as like um, tools that you can use to measure how your, your, your content is being indexed and WordPress even provides those tools for you. It's accessible. It has ac accessibility built in. Accessibility is the process and configuration of a website and web application to be accessible for anyone, including those with visual hearing and physical impairments. Um, a lot of clients come to us and ask, like, can you make our website ADA compliant? ADA is the American Disabilities Act. And although the American Disabilities Act and compliancy has translated into the physical realm, meaning like if you go to a restaurant, uh, there's actually laws in place that say you have to have, you know, designated um, handicapped spots. You may have to have a ramp into the building. Um, you may have to have designated handicap seating or parking spots, different things like that nature. Um, in the web, there's no laws. Now, there's some gray areas because people have been taken to court numerous times and it happens a lot because someone's trying to sue a website owner because their website was not compliant for ADA from, for the American Disabilities Act. But at the same time, that website owner can argue, well, show me what that law is. And then you will see that there's no actual governing body enforcing that law. It's an organization or it's a community that is arguing that law. Here's our stance on it. Any website that we produce needs to be accessible. We use WordPress for that ability. Google and WordPress and the website consortium, they get it too. And that's why if you ever go into to marketing or you want to learn more about search engine optimization, you'll see that a lot of accessibility features are already incorporated into the structure of how websites are indexed by Google. So if your if your website isn't accessible, Google's going to know and they're going to flag you for that and they're going to be less likely to index you based off of a web or versus a website that is accessible and their content is um, properly set up. I will show you some of these things when we get into WordPress. Uh, out of the box, WordPress is responsive. Uh, the only limitations, meaning it is responsive to any device, it's mobile ready. The only limitations that you have um, are either outdated or unsupported themes, um, or I guess I, could, I should say actual plugins as well, which WordPress is actually starting to crack down on. Um, they are forcing theme authors and plugin authors 
to update their code. And if it's not updated, they remove it off the repository, they remove it off their directory, and you can't use it anymore. It's optimized for, for performance. Um, the performance got a bad rap several years ago because it took up a lot of space. WordPress took up a lot of space and took up a lot of resources. But with the advancement of technology and the popularity of WordPress, hosting providers get that and they have actually worked to make WordPress and the server work in, in, in conjunction together and, and seamlessly. So the performance with WordPress is actually pretty solid and there are tools in place that you can use to make it even better. The plugins that you get, uh, which plugins are add-ons, they're applications and software that contain a group of functions or features with, which help improve WordPress in, in all of its aspects, meaning the theme, the design, the functionality. And we'll go through that uh, when we take a look at WordPress, but just the ability to have those enhances what you already get. It's secure. Again, this is something that WordPress got a really bad rap on. Well, when we started using WordPress, or I guess I should say when we when we committed to say, hey, WordPress is going to be our CMS and we don't need to work with any other ones. That was uh, about six years ago. And at that time, there was a lot of talk about how insecure WordPress was and and how you shouldn't use it. And there's this, you know, essentially just rumors. And we found out that it wasn't WordPress that was the issue. It was the hosting environments that were an issue. They weren't optimized for WordPress. Um, or it was the people who were actually managing WordPress. They weren't educated enough to understand how to use WordPress and how to lock it down. WordPress kind of took that and said, okay, look, if you're not going to take time to put us into a secure hosting environment, or you're not going to take time to work with meaning, you know, meaningful companies who care about the security, we're going to go ahead and build these features in. And so that's what we have today. Um, WordPress is constantly looking at not just the code that it's built on, but also the users and how to keep them more and more secure. But we live in an age where security is always going to be an issue because we're constantly asking, accessing information across the internet using different tools and implementations. So it's not always WordPress that's the issue. It could be the browser. It could be your connection. It could be the fact that, you know, everybody in your household knows your password. Um, and then finally, it has a very strong support network. Uh, I mentioned Mulligwig earlier, and I said I was going to mention him again. So Mulligwig went out and he helped develop Automatic. Automatic is the driving force behind WordPress. It's the people that keep it going. Now, Automatic is thousands of developers that give their time and their effort to work on patches, releases, functionality. That core support system goes even beyond Automatic it goes to you, to me, to everyday users that contribute to the future of WordPress. Um, WordPress.org has a great community of support that you can reach out to for pl plugins, for themes, or, or anything else. Now, outside of that, there are people who are solely dedicated to reviewing plugins, themes, uh, tips and tricks, and you will find those resources out there, and we'll probably even in, in see some of them. So in our next lecture, we're going to dive into WordPress. I'm going to show you how WordPress gets installed, and I'm going to show you the basics of WordPress, and then you're going to get turned over to your own um, WordPress install and get to play around with it. So uh, I encourage you to look at the next uh, lecture because it's really going to show you how to use WordPress. And if you don't do that, then you're going to be a little bit lost.